Hey guys, Tarek, Maryface here. Welcome to Maryface Aviation Ground School. And today we're going to look at how to use a CRP to solve for some simple wind problems, which, which happen to be the most common ones. Okay, so what should I say apart from the fact that they're simple? Uh, well, yeah, that's the thing. They're, they're complicated to explain, like describe, but they're actually really simple in practice, which is why some people might get confused when they see the explanations. So I decided to demonstrate it. Sorry, which makes it so much easier. Okay. So let's begin with the first question. An aircraft is flying with a task of 100 knots. Local winds are at 030 degrees 20 knots. The aircraft wants to overfly a VOR that is at a true bearing of 090 from its current position. What true, uh, what true bearing should the aircraft fly and what will its ground speed be? So what do I mean by what true bearing should the aircraft fly? I mean what true, what true bearing should it fly in order to get a true track of 090 degrees to, get, uh, to arrive over the VOR? So the first thing's first is to actually write down the values you need. So there you go, the values you need. Let's move the, tilt the camera a bit down. Okay. And you've got the winds, you've got the, uh, the true track you want, and you've got the task. And you want to find the ground speed and the heading. Okay, well, here's our CRP. What you'll notice about the rule slide is that there's two sides to it. There's a high wind speed side, and there's a low wind speed side. Well, in this case, we're going to use the 100 knots, so it's a low wind speed side. So we're going to slot this in with the true bear and true heading written at the top. Just slide it in nice and comfy. And first thing we're going to do is, sorry, just making sure the slide is clean, cool, is line up the center dot with 100 knots, so with a true airspeed. So we're going to line it with a true airspeed. Bam. And now we're going to align the true heading with the heading of the wind. So the, uh, sorry, the direction the wind is coming from. So zero, three, zero degrees. There you go. Right, now what we're going to do is we're going to take a pencil and we're going to uh, find 20 knots. So we're going to put a mark 20 knots below the 100 knots uh, point. So 20 knots below the blue circle. There we go, we've got a, a cross at 80 knots. And now we're going to rotate so the true heading is lined up with 090. There you go. Okay, now we're near the final steps. Because what we need to do is we're going to look at the cross. And we're going to see that it's at about uh, 10 and a half degrees variation to the west. Now to correct this, we're going to grab the top and we're going to rotate towards the cross. In this case, the cross is to the right, so we're going to rotate 10 and a half degrees to the right, so we can line up 79.5 degrees to the true heading. And now we're going to look back at the cross and see that it now says 10 degrees variation. So we're going to go back to 080, which is 10 degree variation, and it matches. So what we've done is basically, in very few simple steps, is uh, match the variation. So if you look, 90 degrees is with a 10 degree variation with the cross which has 10 degree variation. So sometimes you know, you'll get a big difference, like 15 variation, and when you get back, you do the 15 degrees variation, suddenly you'll see nine degrees variation. And so you just have to pinpoint the, mi the, the middle ground until you actually find it. So in this case, we know that our, the heading we have to um, turn in order to have a true track of 090 is 080 degrees. Now to find the uh, ground speed, it's even easier, because now we've fin finished doing that, we're going to look at the cross, and we're going to see what airspeed it's at. So it's at 80, 82, 84, 86, 88, about 89 knots, because it's between the 88 and the 90 uh, line, so it's 89 knots. So the answer is 0, 08, 0 degrees, and 89 knots. Done. And question answered. Right, now the second problem I want to look into is wind components. And actually, I'm going to cover the second half for now, because this is really really simple uh, the thing is uh, the CRP methods to find wind components is pretty rubbish it takes too long and it's not very accurate so I propose an easier faster and more accurate method which is using this beautiful thing and some simple mathematics so here is the question an aircraft is flying with true track of 170 degrees what will be the headwind component if the winds are 210 20 knots 
So as before, we write down the we write down the information we want, and now we're going to go into why the formulas I'm going to give you work. We've got two very basic mathematical uh, lines, and I'm sure everybody in their life has seen at least once. We've got the cos and the sine, and actually we use these two to find components. So if you look at the bottom diagram, if you have an aircraft with a certain heading and it's got a difference between the wind, uh, where the wind's coming from and the heading, and we call that, that difference in angle Y, and you've got the other, um, the difference in angle between the perpendicular of the wind and the um, aircraft and the horizontal, basically you find out you have this um, angle X. Sorry, I'm really badly explaining this, but just have a look at the diagram if you understand it. So, in order to find these, you can actually use the cos and sine of each thing. If the aircraft were heading into the wind, uh, we'd have uh, the W knots cos zero, and that would equals one, so cos zero equals one, so therefore headwind would be W since we're into the wind. That's how it makes sense. Uh, just try it yourself and, you, and you'll see it works. So therefore, with this simple, um, this simple sort of uh, logic in mathematics, we come up with these um, uh, expressions. You can either remember it as this way, headwind equals W cos Y, or crosswind equals W sine Y. You can learn it this way, you can learn it this way, you can learn it this way, you can learn it however you want. Just jot it down and look at the one you prefer. I would recommend learning the whole thing because it sometimes just, it, it saves you time. Well, now that we've done that, we now know a formula for this. So what we can do is we have, we know the diff, we can calculate the difference between these two. So 210 minus 170 equals 40 degrees. So if we were to use this uh, diagram, we know that y is equals to 40 degrees, okay? Because if we imagine that this is actually uh, coming from the, this is coming from the 210 and this is the direction 170, so the, we basically know that this is 40 degrees. Obviously this is wrong because it would have to be in the parallel, as in, in the other side. But this is just for emphasis sake. So we've got y equals 40 degrees and we know that the wind component is 20 knots. W equals 20 knots. Therefore, if we look at the headwind, we have headwind, sorry I'm writing through the camera stance which makes this really hard, Headwind equals 20 cos 40, because if we look at the, f at the earlier equation here, headwind is W cos Y. So headwind equals 20 cos 40. We take our trusting calculator right here. We say 20 cos 40. Uh, sorry, that's not, there's no cos there. Cos 40. Bam. And we end up with 15 uh, knots wind, and that will be the head. Uh, sorry, wind, and that will be the headwind.